Hello and welcome to another episode of Alberta's Regiment, Stories of the South Alberta Light Horse. My name is Wes Krause, curator of the Regimental Museum for the South Alberta Light Horse. And with me today is Captain Don Gerling, Canadian Army Cadet Instructor. Welcome, Don. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I've been uh, 18 years as a cadet instructor through and a past CO uh, twice uh, as a commanding officer and a member of the Regimental Association. And it is my great honor today to uh, introduce uh, the Honorary Colonel of the Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel John Ferguson. Uh, it's a pleasure that you're able to be with us today. Well, I'm just honored to be here and be able to be a part of this whole discussion that we're going to have this morning. So, uh, yeah, very, very pleased about it all. And, of course, I'm very honored to be the Honorary Colonel. Uh, I'm very, uh, I've, I've looked at your biography and uh, in awe, quite frankly, it's... Uh, quite a uh, professional career that you've had and I, I would really like to, uh, for you to share a little bit of uh, your professional career uh, in uh, the oil patch and your uh, true Albertan I think by what I can see of your of your uh, bio so well I guess you'd say I was a true Albertan I was born here and raised I've been been here all my life my wife's an Albertan my children are all Albertans born here actually my parents were bo uh, both born here in Alberta so I guess there's pretty good deep roots here into Alberta uh, actually, I started off and, uh, at the University of Alberta. It's where I began with my education after I finished uh, high school in Edmonton. And I graduated in commerce and went on to article with Price Waterhouse and became a chartered accountant. Didn't take me long before I got into the oil business. I got, was uh, hired as the chief financial officer of an oil company. And uh, I lasted there for six and a half years and decided that I wanted to start a company. So I founded a company called Princeton Developments in Edmonton and it was involved primarily in real estate development and throughout Western Canada we built office buildings throughout Western Canada and uh, it's been a, it was incredible uh, I was very lucky to have a lot of really good people around me and we built it into probably one of Canada's largest commercial real estate development companies so I did that in the course of because of the success of that I was invited to get back into the oil business in different ways along the time along that time and then uh, in particular I think the most what I, I guess most proud of is the, uh, the time I had uh, at uh, Suncor Energy where uh, I was asked first on the board and then I was asked to be the chair of the board. And be, to be at Suncor during that period of time when we acquired PetroCanada was quite a significant time. So I've been very fortunate along the, along the way. There's a lot of other little things, but uh, those are just things I thought would be of interest. And you have a connection, a, a greater connection with the University of Alberta as uh, a chancellor, I believe? Yeah, I was originally asked and I, I uh, accepted that. I was the chair of the board at the university and I did that for three years and uh, later on I thought, uh, I thought that was my days at the university were finished and then I was asked if I would be the chancellor. And I was the chancellor from 2000 to 2004. A very, very delightful role to have and in a great institution. Now, in your role as a chartered accountant, I understand that you have a rather uh, unique award that was presented to you. Could you describe a little bit of that for us? Yeah, again, I was uh, uh, very honored that, uh, that I've got a, what they call as a Lifetime Achievement Award. First of all, I'm a, a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants. I think that was the ultimate of the uh, honors that I'd ever get. And then beyond that, uh, to my total uh, surprise, is that uh, I was awarded this Lifetime Achievement Award. And there's probably, a, I think there's probably about only 20 of us in the history of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Alberta that have that award. And that's for, what, uh, I guess, for what contributions to the Institute and to the community as a whole. So, yeah, I'm very honored about that. So as the honorary colonel, um, I think the public would be interested to know what, what is the criteria and what your role is in the, in the regimental family. Well, there's a lot of different roles on that, Don, is that uh, I'd say the biggest role is the, uh, the bridging the general community with, with the regiment. It's uh, making the community aware of what goes on in the regiment and just generally with the military. And also uh, making the military uh, a bridge and getting support from the community as well, uh, getting community support. And we do different things in that regard, so uh, trying to build that bridge. and. Uh, so that's primarily what it is, and there's all kinds of little things you do. 
like one of the things we did last summer is that we uh, came up with the idea and it was a huge success of the Military Cup Golf Tournament that we held in Edmonton at the uh, Royal Mayfair, Mayfair Golf Course. And we had the full support of the, uh, uh, I guess, of the military of Cross Canada, the, the uh, commanding officer of the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. In fact, the commanding officer of the Air Force was out for the golf tournament as well. We came up with this idea of bridging so that uh, we would show off different aspects of the military to the community. Now the South Alberta Light Horse put it all together. We did it all as our regiment. And, uh, and just basically in, the purpose of it was to make an awareness, public awareness, and raise some money. And raise money for uh, charities that are of, uh, you know, to the heart of the military, like the Family uh, Resource Center. Uh, to, and another one we raised money for was the uh, Lieutenant Governor's uh, Circle on uh, Mental Health and Addiction. You know, and, so, and, and the and Jude Pitt Lake Don as well as the, and for the cadets. So we did it for all three of those. Yeah. So how did, how did you actually come to this? Uh, over, was it a, a military at all? Did you have any military experience or were you d invited to be a part? Or? How did you become the Honorary Colonel of the South Alberta Light Horse? Uh, I was actually, I started off as the Honorary Lieutenant Colonel and then I became the Honorary Colonel. It's th step by step. And uh, in reality what happened is uh, Honorary Colonel Stan Milner asked me. He was the Colonel okay. and they wanted to get a, an Honorary Lieutenant Colonel so he asked me if I would take that on. Stan had me out to a number of different functions and uh, to see what my interest was. And I think it was a two way. They're looking at me and I'm looking at them and see if it would be a good fit. And uh, when he asked me again, I was very honored to have that opportunity. You know, the South Alberta Light Horse has got such a fine history and reputation. And, and uh, I thought, well, that's another uh, chapter in my life and a very important chapter. Yeah. yeah. Now, I understand uh, as being part of the organization or being involved with the organization, you had an incredible opportunity to uh, take an, uh, a flight with, uh, with the Royal Canadian Air Force. I did, because one of the things when I was uh, uh, appointed the honorary, uh, I guess at that stage, no, I was honorary colonel, is our commanding officer asked, he says, what would you really like to do? And I said, well, you know, it's not to deal with the Army. You know what I'd really love to do if I had the perfect dream come true? And that would be up and to fly one of those CF-18s, you know, a fighter jet. And I'd love to do that. I didn't think it would ever happen, but anyhow, uh, Colin Moshaw, he uh, arranged for me to, to do that, went out to... Uh, Cold Lake and uh, I had the opportunity of actually sitting in there and being trained into it, spending a, a whole day on going through the aspect of uh, all of the safety precautions to go through, getting fitted up into the G uniform as such for the G forces. That I couldn't believe the G forces would blew me away as to being in that airplane. And anyhow, we flew it and uh, flew with the pilot as we were, he was teaching students and we were the bad guy in our plane and we were the bad guys and they had to come and get us. What an experience it was. Oh. I, we actually, he gave me the throttle too at one point in time, and I had the opportunity of flying the plane and breaking the sound barrier. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. fantastic! That was that was an incredible experience to have. Yeah. Now, uh, are you the chairman of the? There's there's a South Alberta Light Tours Regiment Foundation, if I were, if that's yeah. a proper way of. Yes. Now, what what does the foundation? What is the, what do they do? Uh, it's obviously similar to what you just mentioned earlier. Well, the foundation is a huge support to the, uh, to the regiment itself, to the unit. We try and provide uh, financial support. We try and make, do things of the awareness of the, of the regiment. And actually, my role, Stan Milner, I told him he had to stay on after he stepped down as the honorary colonel. And he is the, uh, the chair of the board of the foundation. Yeah. And I'm the president, I guess, of the foundation. And uh, we, we work hard at this of uh, making the awareness. And that was where we got the idea of the military cup. Uh, to have that Military Cup golf tournament and raise some money. Again, I'm making an awareness in that regard. And that's a little bit of what the foundation does, just different things for awareness and also to try to provide some uh, financial help. And have the public been quite receptive to that? Yeah, I don't think the public is all that aware of it. We try and yeah. don't make the foundation the forefront of everything. Right. We certainly want to make sure the unit is the forefront and uh, right. that we don't get it, don't put the, the cart in the front, ahead uh, uh, of the horse. <laughs> it's my understanding that the foundation provides uh, some educational bursaries for some of the young soldiers. Yeah, we do. We've uh, had this as a tradition for many years, is that all of our soldiers are in any kind of uh, post-secondary education, we give them the opportunity of uh, 
of uh, receiving a scholarship and uh, and we'd go up to I think we're uh, up to uh, 20 a year like a thousand dollars each so it would be twenty thousand dollars available for scholarships to uh, any of our members of the of the regiment that are into any kind of a sec post-secondary program really of almost any type uh, last year I think we only had about seven of those unfortunately but it, it's, it's all available I and mean, we'd love to get it up to a few more yeah but that's a little, again, another role of our foundation, which we do. And it, it, it not only helps for those young people that are doing that, but it helps in the recruitment as well, because it does, there's something there in that regard. Yeah. Well, with your background with uh, education uh, and uh, your tie to the university, obviously uh, development, I think, is you're, you're an ideal fit for, for those types of things. Um, wanting to be able to develop the, the youth of our yeah. of our uh, nation and yeah well I have to mention to you about one thing that I'm doing right now with my wife is this a it's a big program that we've got uh, we're taking on the role of creating the the Peter Lougheed leadership uh, initiative here in Alberta which is a collaboration between the University of Alberta and the BAMP Center to create an organization that will enhance the uh, learning the uh, the leadership abilities of our young people and it's bringing the two together with the, uh, the Peter Lougheed Leadership Institute at the Banff Center and the Peter Lougheed Leadership College at the U of A, I'm bringing the two together. It's, it's, it's again, building on the, on the youth and the, who are the future of, for tomorrow. Yeah. Now, also reading your bio, it, you've been involved in so many organizations. Uh, it's almost uh, too many to even mention. We could take a, an entire day just talking about all the organizations you've been involved with. But there's something that's really kind of that stood out. Um, and it was three words, the Order of Canada. Mm. Can you give us some insight as what was that all about? Well, when you're mentioning the Order of Canada, I have to say, I can't help but say that uh, uh, I'm the second one in our family to get that. To, my wife got it first, and was she in the? She had all the bragging rights around that. She was uh, inducted as a member of the Order of Canada about two years before I did, for all of the things that she did. And I was very proud of her, and went down to Ottawa to Rideau Hall, and uh, and when she uh, yeah, got the award, and then uh, to my total surprise, is uh, I thought that was that was it for our family. With that, is uh, I get a call uh, to indicate that I'm also uh, uh, becoming a member. And it was for, really, for my uh, work that I've done in the area of business and also for my uh, work in post-secondary education, specifically at the University of Alberta. And those were the two things that were specifically referred to. So I was very, obviously very proud, but I think what's really special about it, there's not many husband and wife teams that have the Order of Canada. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, a, that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as, you, as we talked earlier, uh, your contributions to Alberta have been quite quite numerous. Is there any singular or group of uh, contributions or activities that, that stand out in your mind that are really something really incredible? Well, I, uh, I can't think of anything specifically that yeah. for what I've done or been a part of. I think I've just been very fortunate to have been in Alberta. I mean, we can't think of a better place to be. I say that I'm the luckiest guy in the world. A big part of why I'm so lucky is just I'm here in Alberta and there's so many opportunities here. Yeah. So, and what does the future hold? Well, now with oil prices down, there's a little more challenging, but uh, we've been through this before and uh, we'll go through this again. And uh, the future's always great because it's just the spirit of Alberta. I mean, Alberta's got a spirit that's different than anywhere else in North America. It's a, you know, it's a spirit of we can, you know, we can do it. And it's, and we do. And it's, it's a wonderful place. I always call it a first generation. When people come to Alberta, it's not of who your father was or anything like that. It's who are you and what can you do? I think that's what's special about Alberta. But you're kind of unique in that respect in that you're third generation Al Alberta bound. I mean, there's not too many people that can even claim that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can only claim even for being first generation Canadian, let alone first <laughs> generation Albertan. But, uh, yeah. Uh, what uh, you you had some t talking about your uh, your family a little bit would be interesting to know about your your father's uh, experiences. Yeah, my father was born in uh, in Tofield, Alberta, and uh, he, uh, he, uh, he he served in the, in the military in the army, 
in uh, around the time of the Second World War. He didn't go overseas. Uh, and then, he, uh, then after that, he worked for the Edmonton Public Transit System, the, uh, the bus. And my dad drove a bus for 35 years after that. That's, that was his background relating to that. So uh, that was his background. And uh, his parents came to uh, Canada, I guess, back uh, 1800s, uh, went to Quebec, and then came to Alberta about in the early 1900s. My mother's side of the family came from England. And they came in about 1905. They came right to uh, St. Albert, actually. And uh, that's where that's sort of the family started from, with the two branches coming together there. Uh, now, uh, myself and then uh, of, uh, our children, our three boys, were born here. Uh, unfortunately, we've got one left in, in Alberta, and he's the uh, president of the Edmonton Economic Development Corporation, Brad. And everybody knows him. Now I'm noted and I get introduced. I'm Brad's dad rather than the other way around, <laughs> which is kind of cool. And I have one son that's living in uh, Shanghai with his family and another one in the Okanagan. But, Shanghai. yeah, in Shanghai. Everything was great. I didn't mind him going over there, but he took our granddaughters too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, the reason I asked that question is because, uh, you know, we're, we talk about the South Alberta Light Horse as Alberta's regiment, which it truly is. And I can't yeah. think of anybody that fits better. Uh, given the history of who you are and what you are, that that uh, you've um, become and taken on that uh, task of being the honorary colonel. I mean, you're a great ambassador for the province and for uh, uh, the regiment, and uh, uh, that for the future. I don't know what you how you see the future, but I'd be interested to know some of your thoughts there. When you say the future of uh, of the regiment and your involvement, uh, well, I'm certainly going to be involved. That's for sure. And uh, the regiment, we just keep working hard at the situation of uh, making sure the recruitment is as strong as we can make it, and functioning that way, and uh, continuing to make uh, uh, the regiment noted as Alberta's regiment. Is that uh, the more that we can do to make sure that people know a little more of the history of the regiment and uh, the contributions it's made. I mean, there's so many components, as, uh, as you would so well know, Don, of how it was all brought together, the many pieces that brought together for the South Alberta Light Horse. And uh, the more that we can share that story with others, uh, the, the more that uh, I'd say that Albertans will be proud of the regiment as well. And I, I just think I have that role of uh, helping to uh, tell the story. Yeah. And how do you find, uh, uh, when you're involved in the business, your business part of the world when you sort of uh, are trying to promote the regiment, so to speak. Uh, how, how do you find the reception? Well, people are very proud uh, of the military generally, you know, and people have the opportunity. I'd say 90% of Canadians are very proud. There's always going to be the naysayers that are over there, but 90% of Canadians are very proud. So anything that you can do and say that's uh, positive about the South Alberta Light Horse, people sit up and take notice and they want to be supportive in any way they can. It's a little bit about telling the story more than anything else. And, uh, you know, as you would know so well, is that Canadians are very proud people of, of the achievements of what our military has done over the years. Now, yeah, again, reading your bio, um, there's quite a few mention, or there's a mention of quite a number of awards that you've received. And uh, it, it, were they related to your business work? Oh, gosh. I, uh, probably, yeah. You know, it's uh, it certainly would relate to the different things that I have done. Um, I, I'll share with you that I, I I wrote a book about four years ago. I didn't know I was going to write a book to start it, and it was really to share my life experiences uh, with my grandchildren. And it was just so I just started the various chapters of putting it all together in the different parts. Then I came to the part of saying, okay, what am I going to call this book? You know, this wasn't a book for, for sale, but it was just really for family and, and for friends. And so what I got, and I said, you know, I just have to say the perfect title for it, I call it, I titled it Born Lucky. And uh, I think that tells it all that I just was born lucky and everything I've been around, I've been lucky at. Well, your contributions to Alberta have been incredible. Um, and it's very much appreciated. And I think we, we mentioned before, um, You've got a lot on your plate, so to speak. Um, how do you? How can you balance your time? It, it must be very challenging. 
Well, I, I never find it challenging is that, uh, you, you know, you, you don't take on something unless you know that you're going to be successful at it. And uh, it's amazing how, it's not, whether it be me or others, it's usually if you're looking for, you know, you want the right person, you find a busy person. And they're usually the ones that will do the job for you. And, uh, you know, I've always been busy at things. I mean, I, uh, you know, I still like to go into the office by 7.30 each morning, and I don't come home for supper too early at night either. So, but, that's, but I love it. You know, I love living life to the fullest and uh, taking on more responsibility. And variety of things. I love to have lots of varieties. I always tease, that's another chapter in my life, I always say, of doing something different. And, uh, you know, in my role as the honorary colonel, that's another important chapter in my life. Yeah. Are there any other um, projects that the Foundation are, are currently working on in support of the regiment? Uh, I don't think there's anything specific. There's a few bunch, there's a whole number of ideas we've got, but there's nothing really that I can put my finger on to say there's a specific project right now. Yeah. 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 I, you know, one of the things I'd like to see if we could do is that in a couple of years is to again do the Military Cup again, but I'd like to do it in Medicine Hat. You know, I think that would be ideal. It, uh, uh, it would be ideal to move it around, but particularly where it has close ties with the, you know, with the Sally Horse. Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. Well, um, I don't know if we have anything else. What would you like to? Uh, not really. Uh, you're, uh, you're quite an open book. I don't even know where to start <laughs> to ask you some so more questions. I'd like to pick, a, pick away at a bit more of your experiences, but. Uh, um, you're uh, ex extremely well versed in in, uh, in Alberta and, and in the business world, and and you're a tremendous asset for the regiment, which is uh, yeah. that's, I guess that's a statement, not a question. But uh, well, you're very kind. Those are nice, kind remarks. I appreciate <laughs> that. I think they're uh, a little bit over the top, but I mean, it's uh, <laughs> thank you. Well, sir, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Uh, I got a feeling we could probably talk for hours and hours of the things you've done in your business life uh, relating to the regiment as well, too. Uh, but we really do appreciate you taking the time to join us uh, this morning. Thanks, Wes. I'm just delighted to be here with you guys. Very. Thank you. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching another episode of Alberta's Regiment. Excellent. Well done. Wes, I'm going to get you to ask one question. I cut to Don instead of you. Oh. Oh, okay. And uh, just ask that question and I'll You'll blend it together. Blend it in? Yeah. So I don't have to do anything? You don't have to do anything. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Yep. So how did you become the uh, honorary colonel of the, uh, the honorary colonel? Okay. Let's do that once more. So the honorary colonel of South Alberta Lake. Got it. Okay. It takes three or four tries. Yeah, I, know. Know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> How many times do we try that intro? <laughs> oh God! I almost made you a general one time. Yeah, no. <laughs> Just sign the paycheck. There you go. So, how did you become the honorary colonel of the South Alberta Light Horse? Excellent. Well done. Perfect. Perfect.